Hello and welcome to another episode of The Mark Medley Show. I opened with the theme from that old show, The Twilight Zone. Because the title of this post is, We Have Crossed Over Into the Twilight Zone. And I say that because of everything that's going on. And I'm a very observant person. And I just kind of look and listen to things going on around me. And just by doing that, I can't help but come to the conclusion that we've crossed over into the Twilight Zone. You remember that show that would open with Rod Serling's voice, that very distinctive voice. And the show would open with him talking and he would end that little intro with saying, if all those things that had happened that he had just talked about, then you've crossed over into the Twilight Zone. As you know, not only do I do this podcast, I also host a radio show, The Reading Circle with Mark Medley, that airs on Saturday mornings. And this morning, during my commentary, many of the same things that I'm about to say, or much of the same thing that I'm about to say, I said it this morning on the air during the show. First, I am scared or afraid of what we are producing in terms of our educational system and our students and and what they ultimately grow up to do and become. And let me tell you why I'm saying that. I had an experience the other day where I was going to pay a bill and the receptionist sitting behind the glass took my credit card as I was paying the bill and she picks up the card and looks at it And she says, this card expires July 27. It expired July 22nd. And I looked at her as if to say, what are you talking about? Because I knew the expiration date was March of 2022. So I took the card back and I explained to her that that meant March of 2022, just like we're in 2018. And she looked at me and said, Oh, and I walked away from that saying, wow, now this is someone who works in the business, who is working, and she wasn't a teeny bopper. She was either in very late 20s, early to mid 30s. I don't think she had hit 40 yet, but she was old enough and should have been working long enough or had worked with enough credit cards and debit cards to be able to understand and read an expiration date yet she looked at my card and said this expired July 22nd now it was bad enough that you were getting the fact that it was the year and month mixed up with the date but she didn't even call the right month because the card said 03 slash 22 and she said July So that was just one instance. Yesterday morning as I was drinking my coffee as I was preparing to go to work, what I usually do during that time is I'll go through my Twitter feed because that's kind of the way we communicate now with Twitter. And I'll go through my feed and I'm going through there and I'm reading a post and the person was trying to say the word aloud. A L L O W E D and the person spelled it A L O U D I read the sentence and I had to look at it again and I said no cuz the way the sentence was written I knew the word aloud and aloud had been misused as I said what should have been in there was A L L O W E D And what was in the post was A-L-O-U-D. Now, see, I know where we're in this time with texting and text ease and social media. And people will say, oh, well, you got to give people a pass. No, I don't give people a pass. And I'm going to tell you why. Because you can pretty much rest assured that the person who spelled that A-L-O-U-D in that Twitter feed, in that Twitter post, 
most likely if they're writing a paper, the word allowed is spelled wrong in there too. See, anytime I use social media, I text, I always spell the entire word out and I spell it correctly because I don't want to get into the habit of text ease. I don't want to get into the habit of just blowing by mistakes and, and thinking it's okay because it was in social media. And then I'll have that same mindset whenever I have to do it for real. But we're in a time where just anything goes. Everything is okay. Who cares? The president's wife, Melania, wore something a couple months ago along the lines of, I don't care, do you? I think that was on her jacket. But that seems to be the mentality of society today. No one cares about anything. So who cares if you spelled A-L-O-U-D compared with the correct way of A-L-L-O-W-E-D. Who cares if you couldn't tell the difference between 03 slash 22, meaning March 2022 versus July 22nd? Who cares? Who, who, I mean, everything and anything goes. I told you, I, I listen. So the other day, I pull up and the car radio next to me, the person sitting in the car, is listening to a song. And the words to the song is, I'm a sick, and I can't say it here because this is a family podcast, but you fill in the blank, the word rhymes with truck. And so the song is going, I'm a sick, fill in the blank, rhymes with truck. I always like a quick, fill in the word, rhymes with truck. I'm a sick. Fill in the word, rhymes with truck. I like to get my, fill in the word, last word was sucked. And this was blaring out of a car. And what came to me was, no wonder folks are so crazy because they're sitting there listening to that all day long. They're literally listening to a song that says, I'm a sick. Mm. And to make matters worse, because that happened to me while I was sitting in traffic the other day. Last night, or early this morning, I have neighbors that have two boys, and they are some silly boys. I mean, they and they're not teeny boppers either. They're in their early 20s, I believe, but they are as silly as they come because they now come into their driveway at 3 o'clock in the morning, loud talking, making a whole lot of noise while my wife and I are trying to sleep. And it's 3 o'clock in the morning, of which I was getting up at 4.20 so that I can go do my early morning radio show on Saturdays. So they're talking loud and my wife is beginning to get annoyed and I said, don't worry, they're, you know, they're just coming in, they'll go on in. But lo and behold, they did not. They were loud talking and then they turn on the car radio and guess what song was on there? I'm a sick... Mm. So again, and this is at 3 o'clock in the morning, so I have to now yell out the window, it's 3 o'clock in the morning while they're playing this crazy I'm a sick fill in the blank word rhymes with truck song now what gets me is there used to be a time when songs such as that that had lyrics such as that could not be on the air could not be on public radio you could not curse on radio but nowadays again because we don't care about anything we're in the twilight zone anything goes Say whatever words you want to say on the radio or on the television. It doesn't matter. Where are our morals? Where are the integrity? Where's the integrity? Where is the concern for your fellow man? It's not there. We've crossed over into the twilight zone. And this is coming all the way from the top. It's coming from the president down. Not to say that these things haven't always been there, but it hasn't been as prevalent. Now, I don't know if it's because I'm older. I don't know if it's because we're more exposed to it because of so many different media that we have now. Because it used to be just TV and radio. Now we have the Internet. We have social media. We have all these different ways that we're exposed to these different things. So maybe that's it. But I don't think it's either of those. I just think the further we go along, the more we've crossed into this twilight zone, the less and less people care about anything. Here in northern New Jersey, we had a situation as I'm, again, looking through the news, the local news on the Internet. I see where the Bergen County Sheriff has now had to resign because of 
racially charged remarks that he made. Because see, again, back to the time that we're living in in terms of technology, you never know when you're being recorded. Because a lot of these things that are coming out now, at some point, used to be in what Mitt Romney called those quiet rooms. And see, now I don't know if the quiet rooms exist anymore because you always have to almost operate as if you were being recorded. So I don't even know if this whole notion of the quiet rooms that Mitt Romney referred to when he was running for president even exists anymore. But in any event, the Bergen County Sheriff, he made commentary whenever New Jersey had elected his Democratic governor, who's, who's really inclusive and believes in diversity, and it shows it in his cabinet. So the Bergen County Sheriff, from what I understand, and I'm paraphrasing, said something along the lines of, oh my God, we have this Democratic governor who's going to legalize marijuana, and that's just going to have the blacks all over the place doing whatever they want to do. Then he says something about someone else who's in the cabinet who happens to be Sikh or Muslim, however that's, that's said. He only got the job because he wears a turban. And then he goes on to say that the attorney general, who's an African-American woman, is not married. Well, maybe she's gay because she's not married. Now, he thought he was just conversating. And as it turns out, he was recorded. And now the recordings came to light and he's had to resign. I've seen a lot of the officials asking for his resignation, which included the governor and the assembly people and other people as well. And Today, I read that he would indeed resigned. See, this is the issue. Again, back to this, we've crossed into the twilight zone. We have a lot of people who are in powerful positions, who can impact lives, who are bigots, who are racist. And let me be clear, there's a difference between a, being a racist and being prejudiced. Now, I know we use prejudice and racist interchangeably, but they're not the same. And let me quickly explain the difference to you. Prejudice, if you break the word down, means prejudge. That means you don't necessarily like something. You really don't know anything about it, but you just don't like it. Let's say, for example, if I were to say, I don't like vanilla ice cream, and I've never tasted vanilla ice cream, but I just say, I don't like vanilla ice cream. So I would say, why? And I wouldn't be able to explain it because I'm prejudging it. Have no idea what vanilla ice cream tastes like. Don't know what it's about, but I'm just saying I don't like vanilla ice cream. That's a prejudice. That's a choice. Like, I like this. I prefer that. The word prefer, prejudice, both of them start with P-R-E, pre, pre, prejudge. But that's different from being a racist. Being a racist, someone who is a racist, is when you're in a position of power that you can impact somebody else's life based on your dislike of their skin color, their gender, their sexual preference, or what have you. That's where that's what a race is coming because people say African Americans can't be racist. Yes, they can. If they're in a position of power where they can impact someone else, uh, or let's say for example, they're in a position of power and now they use that against a Caucasian. Yes, they can be racist as well. So, be, racist means you're in a position of authority or power that you can impact someone else's life based on your views, your dislike of them, your hate of them. That's what a racist is. Now, that's a little bit different from prejudging. Now, prejudging is a part of being a racist. doesn't necessarily have to be the other way around. And we have a lot of folks who are in high seats or powerful seats who are espousing these. And let me tell you when it comes out. Because in the apology, it always says, those statements really don't reflect the type of man or the type of woman that I am. That's what the apology always says. Those statements did not reflect who I am. Yes, it does. Because if it didn't reflect who you are, you would not have said it. So yes, it does reflect who you are. And let me tell you when it generally tends to come out. It generally tends to come out when you're angry or when you've had too much to drink or if when you think you're in one of those quiet rooms that Mitt Romney talked about. Because, you know, there's that saying the drunk man said what the sober man thought and I think there's a little rhyme that goes with it I'm not sure if I'm saying the little little rhyme correctly but I know it's something along the lines of the drunk man said what the sober man thought so you get a little bit of alcohol in you and your true thoughts come out or if you get angry you get angry and before you know it you've said something that normally you might not say but the anger brought up what was really in the subconscious.
So when they start giving these apologies that those words do not reflect who I am as the man, yes, it does. Or the third example that I gave was if you're in one of Mitt Romney's quiet rooms where you think nobody's listening. And see, again, in 2018, you almost have to assume that regardless of who you're talking to, that you're being recorded. Because along those same lines, we had the assistant attorney general or whatever, Rob, Rob Rosenstein, whatever his title is there. He now got caught up as he says something along the lines of wearing a wiretap to go in to see the president. Now, he may have been joking and most likely he was. But what he didn't realize was someone was taking notes or recording him that would now come out later. We have the situation with the Supreme Court judge now, or the nominee rather, that they reached all the way back to when this man was 17 and the doctor was 15. And this just goes to show how something can haunt you so many years later. And it's a message to our kids. Don't think that what you post on these social media sites can't come back to haunt you. Don't think your actions cannot come back 30, 40, 50 years later because you have Kavanaugh now who is in the position to be a Supreme Court judge and things are stalling or being held up because he has now something that's popped up allegedly from his high school years. He says he didn't do it. She says he did. I don't know, but I tell you what, I could see it happening. I could see being 17 years old, drunk at a party and trying something like that, but she's not being given the benefit of the doubt. Anything goes. It's like we've crossed into the twilight zone. You have songs on the radio saying, I'm a sick F-U-C-K rhymes with truck. And you're listening to that over and over again. And it's okay. Folks tattooed all their whole entire body covered. It's okay. Say what you want. It's okay. Do what you want to anybody. It's okay. Again, the other morning going to work, I, I had to laugh to a degree because people are so impatient. Soon as the light changed, they're yelling out their window. And I heard it again twice the other morning. Just anything goes we really in terms of our patience in terms of our morals in terms of our integrity we have crossed into the twilight zone we have a president a man who's sitting in the highest seat in the land who says anything does anything and he's given a mulligan he's given a mulligan to be able to downgrade women he's given a mulligan to talk about various racial groups and religious groups he's given a mulligan that's where we are in 2018 we've crossed over into the twilight zone and I can go on I can go on and on to give more examples of how we crossed into the twilight zone but I won't I'm going to cut it at this point but just as Rod Serling can say we're in the Twilight Zone You've been listening to the Mark Medley Show. You can catch me live each Saturday from 6 o'clock a.m. to 9 o'clock a.m. as I web stream around the world on gobrave.org. That's G O B R A V E.org. org. And in northern New Jersey on FM radio WP 88.7 FM. <laughs>